Um, so to go to break the steps down into greater detail, uh, we need to first prioritize uh, and agree upon the criteria uh, for the positions that we're going to target. You know, clearly, if there's 60 House, 15 Senate, and five U.S. and then a uh, uh, a, hand, a you know a, a larger number of county commissioners and city council people, it's a lot of positions. And so, all we need to do is find out where we can have the most influence and where the most uh, the most need for change uh, exists. Um, uh, so first of all, we would agree on the criteria that we would use for selecting the seats. And it would be things like number of terms of office. There's, there seems to be a lot of people who just run again and again and again, and they're not challenged. And they, um, they develop these uh, uh, attitudes of entitlement. Uh, we have candidates that are misaligned with the Democratic platform. Uh, we have candidates with a poor voting record on issues that matter to, to Democrats. Um, we see some candidates with an absence of outreach to constituents. Uh, if they don't have a primary challenger, they're not compelled to meet with their constituents and ask them for their vote because they don't need them. Uh, and just a general unavailability to meet with constituents. Um, I heard a number of stories uh, during the last session of, of uh, people having extreme difficulty in, in sitting down with their legislators. Yeah, hey, Larry, I just want to jump in real quick. Pat Hacker, and hey, Pat, and Real Jingy, and um, uh, who else is in here? Lemon, lemony Cake, how are you doing? Uh, Jonathan, uh, Pat just says, are you focusing solely on the Democratic Party? And Lemony Cake says we need to reach out beyond. It, we, um, well, we're focusing on the people in the Democratic Party that are in power because of the dominant party, and a lot of those people aren't really doing much for us. So in that sense, we are, right, Larry? I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's who controls both houses in the Oregon legislature. Uh, and so, sure, we could, we, could, uh, we could elect a third party, you know, it, it, it is conceivable that a third party person could be um, uh, elected, but, you know, they're gonna have to choose which party they're gonna caucus with. Uh, hopefully they would not choose to caucus with the Republicans uh, because they have just, be, just continued to decline in, uh, in the way they behave. And so it really leaves the Democratic Party. So, I, you know, so many people are continually piss and moan about the Democratic Party, but if you're a Democrat, it is your party and you have the ability to change things. And, you know, if it's my party, I want, I want people who uh, adhere to the platform of the Democratic Party to get elected to office and push legislation in which reflects their constituency. Well, yeah. So I, 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 I have not heard a, a, a good argument on, on why we should go anywhere else. But, yeah, and just to add into that real quick, uh, it, it, stop looking at it like it's a, so it's a resource. That's all it is, is a resource, and it's ripe for the taking. Think of it that way. All right. It's it's a resource that doesn't have any leadership. It doesn't have a mission. It doesn't know where it's going. It's got some good people in it and it's got a lot of bad people in it. That's it. If you give it more than that, you're giving it power. It doesn't have. All right. So just look at it that way and then let's take it over and use it. That's that's what we're doing here. Right, Larry? And, and the revolution is actually underway. So, yeah, uh, precinct committee persons are the the building block of the Democratic Party. Yes. We've had a 188% increase in the number of precinct committee persons elected this year. That's huge. That's huge. And and you, you said it before, the Democratic Party controls everything, right? Like if we had people in there that were willing to make progress, we'd be making progress. If we had leadership in the Oregon Senate that, 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 that that would do what the Democrats in the state want them to do, we would have passed the national popular vote legislation and we would have uh, passed the no cause eviction there, legislation. There you go. And there's no other, no other way to elect people uh, to get that passed. And unless the, you know, the Democratic Party is, loses so many seats that they, they end up with a minority. But the reality is there's a very good chance that they're going to end up with a super majority uh, just because there were so many seats that were not even contested by Republicans. And so once they made it past the primary, they 
are, are for all intents and purposes, elected into office. Th there's a, so did you just hear that? There's another reason. Republicans aren't even running against these Democrats. Yeah. Right? Just right. Yeah, there were 14 seats that um, uh, had, there were 14 Democratic seats. There were four, there were four seats uh, in the Dem where the Democrats had um, uh, no opponent, and there were 14 seats, I believe. Am I saying that right? 14 seats where the Democrats had a free ride. Yeah. So let me say that again. Republicans had a free ride with four seats. They had no Democratic opponent. The Democrats had a free ride with 14 seats with no opponent. Wow. But the fact that there's no no challengers in for all of those, that, that's ridiculous. 18 seats. Right? Yes. So the second step is that once we have prioritized the seats that we're going to go after, then we know the geographic area where we have to search for candidates. So then we do the candidate search. And this is as much of an art as it is a science. But what we need to do is form a team in each of the targeted districts. Um, we need to find, we need to identify the elected Democrats within the district that could potentially run for a higher office. Uh, we need to identify the appointed boards in the district because uh, appointments are a place where you find people who have expressed interest in civic service. Uh, we need to then research the board membership and find out which ones are uh, Democrats or, or, you know, possibly um, a Green Party uh, or Progressive Party if they made it that far. But certainly on the left side of the dial, because that's where we find people whose values align with ours. Uh, and then also explore civic groups that support schools and so social service programs, because that's also where you find people who uh, are inclined to public service. It, it doesn't do a lot of good pursuing people that have no interest in doing that. So, uh, you know, the next step is then asking the candidates to run. And for every 20 people uh, you ask, you'll be lucky if you get one that says yes, which is a lot of work and it's, it's discouraging work sometimes, but that is the only way uh, we can get people to run. Except in the Portland metro area where there seems to be a lot of candidates that, that come out of the, the woodwork in most of Oregon, you have to ask people to run. And other than the political parties, uh, there's nothing other than business associations or whatever to, to, to do the search for candidates. And so, you know, there's nothing preventing anyone from doing candidate search. And so what we're proposing is that we do this as a coordinated effort, uh, forming teams around the states focused on the districts that we've targeted to find good candidates to run. Yeah, and I, I want to jump in there because Lemony Cakes is uh, saying we need small, we need allies in small Oregon. Well, it, we we have. I mean, we're everywhere. It's just we didn't coordinate our efforts, like Larry was saying. We found out there were two perfectly fine and dandy uh, candidates, progressives running uh, for CD two. One of those should have been running in a different place for something else, right? And instead, they fought each other for the few votes that they got. Right. And, and so we, we really need to just coordinate our efforts. And, and, and we had we had lots of um, people doing lots of work because Uphill Media, we, we were interviewing candidates and a lot of people were reaching out to us and saying, hey, why don't you interview our person and our person? We got this person. And what we were seeing was none of your groups are talking to each other. Why, why didn't this group talk to this group about the fact that they both picked candidates? Right. And, and so if we got together first and said, how about this guy? And you, we, we could all take a vote. Well, good for that. I want to put this person over here, this person over here. That's what, that's what we're talking about here is, is, is we, we have the people power to make this happen. We just need to work together. We need to coordinate. And all we are doing is taking our rightful place in the political ecosystem because Bernie Sanders won the Oregon primary by 56%. Uh, the majority of Democrats voted for the, the progressive candidate, and, and yet they're not represented well in the party itself. And that's, that's really what we're trying to evolve here. But we do have people all over the state. Uh, you know, one of the things that came out of 2016 was a network of people uh, that we've stuck together and communicate with and work together. And so... Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we have them all over the state, and uh, you know there's more groups out there, like the whole indivisible uh, network is developed that we need to reach out to and, and include in this. Um, 
uh, there's no there is no limit to the amount of working together that that we want to do. And we're not proposing that that we have a a, a central agency where where the candidates are chosen. What we want to do is empower each of the districts with the knowledge and the skills to go out and search for the candidates and select the candidates on their own, and then not do things like run three candidates um, and end up splitting the vote. Well, I, I thank you for saying that because I just I want to make that clear to everybody. We're we're just going to outline the process. It, it, you know, everybody's going to be able to do their own work in their own areas. This isn't this isn't about. Um, forcing our will on anybody this is we, we just need everybody to get together and and you know larry can outline once we have people together in groups we can go through you know help you with those steps but one of the more important things is that candidates need to feel like they could run because they have the support to do so and i think a lot of the reason that candidates were like no way was because they're like oh you want me to build a website and i got to do this and i got who's going to do all this stuff right and that's our job the organizations need to provide that that structure. Why, why do the Republicans win so much? Is because they, they take their candidates, they go, look, your job is to get on the phone and raise money. We'll do everything else, right? And, and our candidates, we need them to go out and meet people. We need to take care of all that other stuff. Right? And the sad truth is that if there's really two sets of skills that are involved in, in getting a candidate elected. There's the candidate skills, and then there's the the skills that you use once you're actually in office. <laughs> yes. And it's it's you know it's a it's a it's a blessed day when you find a candidate that possesses those in in huge quantities. <laughs> but if they don't, that's where we can help 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 the candidate develop themselves and and do the right things when they're running for office because running for office is uh, a very complicated. But everybody that's run before now has experience with those skill sets, and that's what's valuable about all of these previous candidates we had, right? Yeah. Right. All right. So that does bring us to step number three, which is to train the candidates. Uh, candidates come with all kinds of, of uh, interesting emotions and things that they're bringing into the campaign, uh, and uh, they find it often very difficult to distill a clear message that speaks to voters, uh, you know, speak with that clarity that, that Bernie Sanders is able to, while well, he's been doing it for a gazillion years, and you know, he's been able to hone his message. Uh, that's not a natural skill that many people have, but uh, it's something that if we have our candidates chosen in advance and with enough time, we can work on those and make them uh, great candidates to run against anyone. Yes. It's sad that we have to consider these optics, right? The but they're important. And we have to agree upon a campaign plan to win. Uh, I was involved with campaigns where they had several campaign managers and, you know, they never, they never got a coherent campaign out of it. And what did they do? They ended up losing. Um, I worked with candidates who, who couldn't, uh, couldn't clearly articulate their positions, no matter how hard we tried. Uh, those are the things that we have to work. 